Hey everybody, it's your boy Maddie Rant. Thanks so much for tuning in. I know you've been waiting for the Stranger Things season three review that I have told you I was going to do all this weekend. Um, and now here it is. Ga -ga 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 -ja. Don't forget to hit that like button, the share button as well, you know, as subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. It's your boy Maddie Rance. You know what we do. Drag race, pose, and any show in between that I love to talk about, plus any kind of drama that we can have a live chat about, this is where it's at. Let's get into Stranger Things. This time in Hawkins, the kids have sort of separated ways, not too much. Puberty has come about and, you know, boyfriend girlfriend dramas all the rage that's literally the first three episodes and it was definitely kind of drag on drag on but it also separated them into different groups where we have new sort of relationships developing between friends some that are being challenged while others have been doing really great since season two I'm talking about Dustin and Steve which are kind of my favorite people on the show right now with new recruits Robin and yes Erica Erica's everything. We'll get to her in a second. New teams are forming. Hopper and um, Hopper and Joyce are, I guess, exploring another crazy relationship with more Hopper being interested in Joyce and Joyce being in him, but Joyce still going through with Bob. They gave a shout out to Bob in the first episode. Ah, there's a lot going on. Oh, don't forget Murray too, because Murray's back as well, and I was pretty happy to see him too. All those relationships and all the fun things going on for the 4th of July with our groups now is still tied into what the show is about, which is Stranger Things. The mind flare is not gone, everybody. They're still trying to open this portal to the upside down, but it's the Russians this time to then release the mind flare yet again so he can terrorize Will and the rest of the gang. It's not really Will who he is targeting. It's really Eleven that the mind flare is after. And he uses a new sort of um, vessel or I guess demonic entity that, that you want to call it, a demigorgon that was not. Because the thing basically exploded a bunch of rats together to form some hemogoblin monster that then caught Billy, our favorite low-key hateful racist from the last season who has a thing for mom. We're kind of here for it even though that storyline did not play out too long this season and I was kind of happy about that because that was a little bit boring for me. But Billy gets taken over by the Mind Flayer and his hemogoblin goopity gloppity monster thingy. And now he's recruiting people to then be a part of this sort of body snatchers tease. Yeah, that was the first couple episodes. A lot of relationship stuff happening here. Elle and Max are now girl buddies. It's no longer this weird thing anymore. Thank God. Will's having issues communicating with Mike and Lucas because Will's not into girls just yet. He's still a part of Team D&D. &D. Uh, I don't know. That that was annoying. All of that was annoying. I'm sorry. I gotta be real with y'all. I don't care for Will, Mike, and Lucas. Everyone found out what was going on in their own individual timelines in their own individual ways. Um, you know, some people were more skeptical than others. I'm talking to you, Max. Down to ride, sister, with L, which was cool, but you were always like... It couldn't be. It couldn't be. And I'm thinking to myself, weren't you just chased by several demi dogs the last season and your believability factor just went a little higher up there? I thank you. Hell, even Nancy and Jonathan were wearing me out, child. Oh, God, I really couldn't take a lot of the, these groups this season. Eventually attacked by the in, giant, incredible, hemogoblin, goblin, mind flaying, goopity goppity monster thing. Elle then gets attacked to a point to where she's injured. She loses her powers. Holy shit, what are they gonna do? Band together and defeat the monster in their own ways. Which they do, but it's at the cost of several people's lives. Spoiler alert, here we go. Billy ends up having to sacrifice himself in order to save Eleven, who the Mind Flayer wanted to kill in the first place. But Billy is then brought back to reality because of course we know he was in control, you know, the Mind Flayer was controlling him. By Eleven then, you know, saying some of his memories that he has, that maybe he has repressed for so long, things that only he would know, where he finally came back to himself and turned around and became a hero after being a complete douche nugget the second season. Yes, 
dies. Then there's Hopper, because mind you, Hopper was annoying me most of this season. I'm going to be just very honest with you. His I'm always angry, it just that was getting on my nerves. However, the last episode, especially when uh, Eleven was reading his letter, girl, the tears. The tears, honey, they was ever flowing, okay? But uh, Hopper, we don't know necessarily if he died, and I'm gonna go ahead and have to say that now because they did not show him dying. They cut away, they cut, they fade to black, or they cut to black as soon as she turns the keys. We see the scientists that were down there that were looking, you know, as all this was taking place, disintegrate into nothing, but Hopper's just gone. So... I don't believe he's dead, but you know, <laughs> it would just mean that Joyce hasn't killed two people. <laughs> After all this takes place, Joyce and them move, girl, and they take Eleven with them because Hopper's not there anymore. And so it's by Hawkins, we gotta go. And everybody's left in this town. Everyone's, you know, uh, Max is left without having her crazy stepbrother anymore, which, you know, now she's very sad about, even though he was a complete jerk to her, but you know, that's your brother. You're gonna feel something. Mike has to deal with Eleven not being there anymore. Eleven's moving away and she's just going with Joyce because that's she has nowhere else to go. It's kind of this crazy situation. Will's losing all of his friends. Like it's it's an interesting setup for the next season. They do give us a final scene after all of the uh, kids say their goodbyes and stuff. They're in some Russian prison and a demigorgon is released to then feed off of someone. So it's almost letting us know, oh, they were able to open the portal. Maybe when they were opening the one in America, the one in Russia got a little bit more expanded and they were able to take some things from that portal before the other one was shut. I don't know, we shall see. Uh, but do clock that they said the American in the other cell, no, not him. I feel like that's Hopper or somebody they're gonna just bring into the show, I don't know. It gives me Hopper tease because, again, we didn't see him die. So that'd be a nice show at the beginning of season four to see Hopper in the cell. Or maybe he came out the other side and there was a whole bunch of people waiting for him. We don't know. After this little run through, let's talk about some of my favorite things. The separate team dynamics. Okay, so this is where I kind of figured out who I liked and didn't like the most of the season. I'm a fan of everybody, but I'm more of a fan now of Dustin, Steve, Robin, and Erica. That team was everything. They were hilarious, they were entertaining. Like, you felt for Steve and Robin's friendship when they got drugged with the Russians and that whole entire part. <laughs> <laughs> with them getting beat up and how Steve was handling it and then them running through the movie theater as Back to the Future is playing and all that stuff. It was just, it was good times. It was good times between them. Erica has the best reads, the best mouth. They need to expand on her character for next season and give her more to do because she was good, good TV. I enjoyed her every time she was on the screen. You're a treat doll. I, I loved it. And her relationship with Dustin, how their back and forth was going over the nerd stuff, that was great too. Glad to see that she has an interest in that. Something that, you know, was a layer to Erica that we kind of expected, but at the same time, it was like, what are they gonna do with her? Better and bigger role this season versus just a few moments here and there from the last season. Joyce Hopper and Murray, uh, I was more interested in the kids dynamic, the preteen dynamic, everybody trying to, you know, save the world versus their approach with Hopper yelling half the time, Murray yelling more than half the time, and Joyce having a few moments here and there of great clapbacks and awesome moments of popping the mare in the face, et cetera, and so on and so on. But yeah, Jonathan and Nancy, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And Will, Mike, and Lucas could, mm-mm, all, mm-mm, nope. Nope. Rest of them, yeah, but mm, mm nope. That this season too, that they had the Starcourt Mall be like the main epicenter where everything was happening. And also all of the story references that I miss seeing, like Sam Goody. Sam Goody, oh, they passed by that sucker. I was like, no! Oh, I miss it, I miss it, oh. I used to love going to Sam Goody as a kid. And all the other stories too that they had in there, even the Burger King sign was the old school one that I remember seeing when I was really little. Orange Julius, uh, hot dog on a stick, everything. So yeah, I really did like the fact that they used that mall. Set design and everything was so great with this, the colors and everything with this show. Just everything as far as production is concerned with Stranger Things was on, was the tea. Mind Flayer worked differently this time than I think he did in the other seasons where, you know, we saw these sort of beings or entities, these monsters, you know, come from the other side to then 
be this crazy thing, uh, come from the other side and terrorize everybody. This time, it felt like he took things from our world and then made something into the insanity that we witnessed. So it started off with all these rats running around that were, you know, I guess, caught by the mind flare, and then they ended up exploding and turning into this goo that then formed into this gross being that could then attach itself to anything, take over its mind, and then use its body to then become a part of it, which y'all saw them drinking like all kinds of cleaning products and fertilizer and just anything that would just kill a human being, but still being able to like talk and walk and, and, and interact and everything. It threw me off. But it also made sense because I'm like, okay, if they're doing all that, it's like, I guess, weakening or making the body very toxic and it, I, I guess, can decompose faster. I don't know. I kind of was wanting them to go a little bit darker with that. I did enjoy the new monster this season. It seemed a, a lot more terrorizing than the other ones, even though in the first season, you can't beat the Demi Gorgon and Barb in the pool scene, honey. You just cannot beat that. That was horrible, terrifying, and justice for Barb, okay? So now on to the movie references. There were quite a few. I'm sure I don't have all of them. Also, if you're in this review and you've noticed that I didn't talk about the Terminator guy, Russian bounty hunter, bodyguard, spy, whatever, I'm gonna get to him in a second because he's in my movie reference part because that was it was just too on the nose with him. And I start. Day of the Dead. Back to the Future. The Thing. It. The Goonies, which they use often. War Games. Red Dawn. Invasion USA. Hell, just say any movie in the 80s. Russian spies and with anything to do with fighting with America. Any of those movies, just, just put them in there. Die Hard. And I mean a lot of Die Hard. Fun House. I've actually seen that movie. The Blob. Obvious reasons. Halloween 2. Big Trouble in Little China. The never ending story. That storyline was the cutest thing ever. Dustin having this girlfriend that everyone thought was imaginary and Susie turns out to be real. And Susie and him have this cute moment with singing the never ending story, which is one of my favorite movie franchises ever. Falcor was everything, okay? You, everybody wanted a Falcor back in the day. Magnum P.I. And that was very evident and clear. They had it on the TV. He was dressed like Magnum P.I. And cheers. Everybody knows your name. Do, 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 do. I'm sure there was more that I just haven't named yet. If I have missed anything, please post it in the comment section here. I know this review was all over the place because that's kind of just where I was at with this. But yeah, it was to me better than season two, personally. Um, it didn't have some random storyline about a long lost sister who never went anywhere. So that was good. Uh, I feel like maybe they're going to bring her back for season four along with some others. I think that would be interesting. Uh, the first three episodes were tough, not too tough, but just enough to where I was a little bit like, where is this going? Then we get to episode four and it went like whew, from there. Definitely watch this season if you're uh, familiar with Stranger Things and maybe season two didn't do it for you, hop on to season three, it's quite worth your time. If you're not familiar with Stranger Things, start watching. Tell me what you like, tell me what uh, you hope to see in season four. What else from Netflix would you like me to watch and possibly do a review and reaction to? It's your boy, Maddie Rance. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, if you want to donate to the channel, because you know uh, I'm in the process of getting a new place um, getting a lot of stuff together and everything else and finding a new job. If anyone wants to help out, those donation links are downstairs in the links below with paypal.me forward slash money rants, cash app dollar sign money rants, and Venmo my dash rants. Hugs and kisses, my best love and wishes to you. I will see y'all later on this week.